some bases randomly from the battlefield and I'm going to showcase them to you to see how I base my miniatures and generally how I portray uh, my armies. So let's start randomly from a unit of uh, French men at arms. Uh, the shields are basically printed images from the internet and then you paint them over just to make them look weathered. Um, these are some French men at arms and knights. I try to um, mix my bases, I try to make them, you know, I don't want to make them look all uh, knights, knights didn't fought on their own, they have retainers, they had heavy infantry. So this is a base uh, with mixed um, miniatures from claim castings. Now let's see another one. Let's go a bit closer. Again, you can see here um, heavy infantry and knights in the front, better equipped and um, the Normandy flag here with the standard bear. I base differently. I base bases with um, men at arms and uh, knights. Um, this is um, the Stuart who became King of Scotland after David II and uh, the Earl of Marsh, if I'm not mistaken. These are all creme castings. And then also we base uh, the typical children with a normal um, heavy infantry. Now this children is not, um, let's say, historically accurate because um, the Scots didn't really have um, shields. They were shieldless. That's why that the front ranks were usually men at arms who protected them with the better with the better armor and shields. So the shields are mostly probably would be for Flemish pikemen. Uh, but uh, I think they look good. So, uh, but if you want to be 100 percent accurate, uh, shields and like pavises were never part of the Scottish children. Let's go to another um, miniature here. Um, these are some Scottish nobles, and uh, you see here I use heavy infantry. Um, to portray um, the mixture of troops here again here these are heavy infantry this guy is a knight in front so try to mix and match this guy is a knight in the back so try to mix and match to make the bases look more accurate and let's see another unit of children here again as I told you children formation not necessarily with uh, pie with uh, shields and pavises but um, I mean, they look good, so we don't mind. So it's again Scottish. Um, let's go to some English here. So here we have some English bowmen. Try to make them colorful and uh, usually earth colors, but you can put colors of their maybe um, the Lord that they could have uh, worn above um, their cumbersome, very nice poses from claimer castings. Again, let's see another. I would say brilliant poses from claimer castings. And again, you see you use earthy colors and you can use obviously the, the livery or the, the, the colors that uh, their uh, Lord might have. If we go to some English men at arms, again, this is a unit of heavy infantry, heavy, heavy foot and men at arms, knights, these are knights, his guys um, could be a bit less a knight, he's not as well equipped as these guys here, but um, try to mix and match, I have better, exp uh, here for example, go to this one. Uh, these are all painted with uh, the colors of their of their lord, northern lords, and uh, these are heavy infantry. Okay, this is um, Hugentag uh, Flemish, but okay, it's not a big issue. But you can see, you can use um, different bases uh, that uh, would make the army look more realistic. Let's go for another one here. Again, as you see, you have heavy infantry, you have the, the standard bearer, and here is uh, 
and better equipped men at home. Again, I would say brilliant poses from um, Claymore Castings. Brilliant, actually amazing. I will see some more. Here, yeah, let's see, for example, the Earl of Oxford, John de Vere. Obviously, he will have higher ranking nobles around him, high ranking men at arms, or well equipped. And around his base, he is one of the major nobles of the period, so you cannot expect him to have a heavy infantry around him. So, yeah, you can make this base look a bit more, um, well, more, more, more well equipped knights around the, the Lord. <clears throat> Here again, Earl of Northampton, another high-ranking noble, but with the heavy infantry here. One of his retainers could be one of his bodyguards. The Lord here, another knight, and a standard bearer, who is, well, it's probably a knight as well. Very high-ranking nobles, these guys, they had really good um, bodyguards. So let's see some mounted English knights. Again, obviously more lively. Men at arms, or knights, retainers, high ranking nobles, more colors. Good, great, great poses for the camera castings. Let's see another one. Give him color so we can make him look different. So some commanders now, for example, this is, this army is based for sword point. So this is obviously the Earl of Salisbury, great commander, great warrior, fought in Poitiers and in many other battles in the Scottish Wars of Independence as well. And this is from First Corps, no claim. Let's see here the Black Prince. I need to fix his flag. So here is the Black Prince with his retainers and his standard bearer. Not all knights, these look more like heavy infantry, but um, powerful soldiers, whatsoever, none whatsoever. I think, I think it gives the effect that we require. And last but not least, let's see the King himself, Edward III. Again lovely colors just to make a difference from the normal bases you see very lively his standard bearer and his retainers in the back protecting him and here we have the king of scotland son robert de bruce his retainers protecting him from arrow fire really brilliant pose very nice miniature, very nice space. So this is how um, bases look. I'm trying to give the feel of um, of more um, variety. So let's see here one more where I painted John Chanders. I have to like fix this and John Chanders and some other knights here. But in the back we have um, his retainers who are heavy infantry. Um, The poses of Claymore are amazing.